Welcome back. This is the ICT Mentorship Daily Log Entry and Midweek Review for March 3rd, 2021. All right, so the dollar index is our daily chart, and I'm going to go through this rather quickly tonight, so there won't be a whole lot of jawboning. The dollar index, as you may recall, we are in non-farm payroll week, so the protocol is we don't really have an opinion on Thursday and Friday. And it might seem a little uncomfortable for some of you that may be thinking, well, shouldn't you know what's going to happen? No, <laughs> not on this week, uh, because the uncertainty of the day before non-farm payroll and the day of non-farm payroll, I just don't want to have an opinion. And I want you to get accustomed to having that same mindset going forward. It'll serve you better having that than that of looking at the charts, thinking you know what's going to happen. Uh, there's been many times where using my tools I thought very convinced about a certain outcome unfolding but it didn't do it so decades of doing that I've learned my lesson okay uh, you can learn a lesson painfully if you want but just know that it's better for you just to take my word for it and observe and do nothing with the expectation of needing to know or feeling like you should know what's going to happen on Thursday and Friday on the week of non-farm payroll every month. Okay. All right. So as a reminder, also, we're still inside this range from the low of January and the high on February. Uh, we came up into mean threshold of this last up close candle here, traded down into the range. We just came into this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. So with those levels here, we do have a small little volume imbalance right here. So adding that to the uncertainty of what they may use for non-farm payroll to close this week, if I was forced to decide what I thought was going to happen, I would elect to think this would be the draw on liquidity. So will it happen? I don't know. But if it doesn't, guess what? There's no skin off my back because it's not a day or the remainder of the week where I'm anticipating precision. So I think that the draw liquidity will be here, okay, for dollar index. And we'll see if that's right or wrong. I'm kind of hoping I'm wrong. So that way you can see that, you know, this is the reason why I don't do anything on Thursday and Friday of this particular week each month. So let's drop down into the hourly chart. All right, so here's the hourly chart for dollar index. Uh, we've came back down into this area here with the order block right there. Not this. Why not this one, Michael? This one has... The consecutive down close candles, it's a big beefy bodied candle versus something like this where it's an indecisive little small body candle. In other instances where if this was the only down close candle, then yeah, it would have more weight. But I'm focusing on this area in here and there are two consecutive down close candles. So we traded back into that and overshooting this buy side and balance sell side and efficiency. So we had some sell side liquidity resting below here traded down below that, went higher, rebalanced here, came back down, rebalanced this and the order block here. So allow me to illustrate both sides only because this is why I'm further illustrating that it's not high probability right now. We have a small little fair value gap there. That could be the upside draw on the dollar. And we also have the sell side liquidity pool here and this order block down here. So either one of those could be traded to. I don't have a clear decision as to what may happen, but if I had to be pushed into a scenario, I would elect to use this high here and the high right here as I outlined on the daily chart. So this is our short-term buy side liquidity pool, and then the next one up here on the daily chart. Let's drop into the 15 minute time frame. All right, here's the 15 minute time frame. Right away, you should be able to see that imbalance right in here with a short-term high. So order block, biggest up-close candle, biggest body and the highest up-close, that's the one I'm picking, okay? I'm not using this one. I'm not using this one. Why not this one? This has the gap, right? This is the order block, and here's the gap that's associated with it, and here's the buy side liquidity pool resting just to the right of it. So we have three PD arrays that could see price reach up into that, and that would be one of the reasons why I would, if being forced to decide on which direction and where it should go, right here is where my eye is, okay? 
The next one would be right in here. This is a short-term little fair value gap right there. So we might see it trade up into that. We'll see. But I'm not trying to make a hard case either way. But I would rather see it do this than where we've had this low. We dropped down below that low, came up, took out a small little area here, and then rammed it one more time below this low. Then we have this bounce rebalanced in here. So to me, it might need to drop down a little bit in here, maybe. But if I, I were making the market for a dollar, I would just keep on sending it higher. Let's go to the five minute chart for the daily log entry. All right, here's the five minute chart for the dollar index. And you can see the limit up kill zone in here. Took out sell side liquidity resting there. And the market rallies higher. Small little imbalance in here with order block. New York open. Institutional order flow entry drill right there. Rallies higher. London close creates the high of the day. Sells off. Bullish order block. Almost completely closes it in here. Does so here. And now it's just continuously making higher highs and higher lows. I don't like this idea of being able to see a real clean diagonal trend line. You know how I feel about that. I don't like it. So does it need to come all the way back down here? I don't think so. Um, it could take out this little area in here. Upset that supposed trend line support if you'd like to see those types of things i don't uh, i'd like to see it come down here if it goes any lower for a discount below here and then we'll see if it wants to go higher with lower prices on foreign currency let's go over to euro dollar now real short and sweet tonight fair value gap we traded up into that as we were expecting rejected that traded down into the mean threshold of the bullish order block here then it out in time and we have the sell side and balance buy side and efficiency here so delineated by this low and this candles high we traded up into that today and we had some selling as a result of that so again uh, this could go either way but i'm going to side on the idea that we may take out this low here and if we get really animated with higher prices on dollar we could run out this low here for euro let's drop into the hourly chart all right here's the hourly chart for euro again smaller one balance in here buy side liquidity pool trades up into that and started to sell off rebalance this area here and then we had a little bit of bounce back up in here bearish order block so i want to see it just stay heavy and go lower attacking that that would make the most sense to me but again because it's the week of non-farm payroll Try not to hold hard and fast to that idea because in normal weeks, I'd say, let's expect it. But right now, I don't want you thinking it's something that you should go in there and break the rules and take live trades and then send me an email saying, oh, I got hurt. <laughs> okay, that would that would really upset me and it bothers me when I hear that people are not listening and they're still taking trades. I don't care if you're making money. That's still not good. Okay, because you're not doing what I'm telling you to do, which is desensitizing yourself to the results. That's how you do the best here. Not, I need to make money as I'm doing this. And if I make money, it's going to make me feel better about it. No, you're learning to trust that you only feel good about the outcome when there's money. Okay, and you need to feel good about the trade because you're indifferent. You don't care about it one way or the other. When you do that, you'll find that trading is better because you're not influenced by fear, greed, loss, or profit. All right, so let's take a look at the hourly annotations on Euro. So this is your breaker, high, low, high, standing out in time. So I wanna see price really kind of like stay below this. It can go up one more time. I don't like the idea of it doing so, but if it does, it could bump the end of this range here, maybe take out this short-term high. I'd rather it not do that. I'd like to see it just stay heavy and just keep moving lower. That's what I'd like to see. All right, here's the five minute chart for Euro dollar. Line up in kill zone. You see we ran at a high out here. Traded lower, New York session, lower. Consolidates, rallies back up into the breaker, mean threshold, and then consolidation into the close for the day. Really hard day if you didn't take the setup that was in London. And as I mentioned before, the classic scenario is you don't want to be trading 
New York setup on Wednesday going forward. Look at the price action here. Do I need to outline anything in here? In other words, regardless of how little experience you have as a new student here, doesn't this look a little uninviting? <laughs> in other words, it doesn't look all that exciting. Like, you probably wouldn't look at this chart and say, oh, I wish I would have took that trade. That's what I'm really getting at. And this is typical of this week, this type of price action. So again, the algorithmic principles I'm teaching you is to focus with that mindset and be content with not doing anything in Forex. Now I got a question today and I felt it was worth bringing up here. And it is when we have non-farm payroll weeks and we don't participate in the New York setup on Wednesday throughout the entire day of Thursday and throughout the entire day of Friday is at all markets and it's predominantly Forex. Okay, so I don't trade currencies and I don't look to trade currencies on those times and days of the week of non-farm payroll. Okay. I tossed in something last night when we talked in the video and I mentioned the S&P market. So the indices are something you can trade every day, but it does have an impact on it for non-farm payroll. But all you have to do is just wait a couple minutes after non-farm payroll Friday and you can still trade the indices on that day. Uh, but for foreign exchange, I don't want you thinking you can trade with non-farm payroll, okay? Uh, the currencies tend to be highly manipulated in this week every single month, and it's classically between 7 o'clock in the morning on the Wednesday all the way through on Friday's close. So I don't have a real clear bearing on that week every single month and on these particular days. And since that's the case, and my data supports that in my trades and all of my log entries, I just make it very clear to myself that this is the time that you don't look at it. So what do you do, ICT, when you're not doing this? I read, I do whatever I'm doing normally. Uh, I read emails and answer them. Um, and if I can, I push myself away from charts and I try to spend time with my wife, uh, my children because they're homeschooled, or I just do the things I normally do, just more of it. All right, so let's go over to the cable market or British pound versus US dollar. All right, here's the British pound versus US dollar daily chart. We have a order block here, bullish order block we traded into the other day on Tuesday. Uh, here's today's trading indecisive. And then we have a fair value gap here in the form of a sell sign and balance, buy sign and efficiency. So if I'm wrong about my expectations on the dollar index, that means I'm probably going to be wrong with this currency too. But if it doesn't go lower, it could trade back up into this area here. And I wouldn't be surprised if euro stays consolidated, dollar stays consolidated, and they still let cable go up into this area here. Again, it's one of those markets right now that I don't trust it. <laughs> so with that, I can't make it any plainer than that. And you're probably saying, why you keep talking about use something else? I did. I've been bringing in the S&P. I don't want to trade S&P. Can you talk about gold? Can you talk about oil? Can you talk about this? No, we're going to talk about what I want to talk about because I'm teaching you if you don't want to focus on currencies the week of non-farm payroll, you swing your attention over to indices and the indices will give you something to practice, to observe, and eventually, if you're a career-minded trader, uh, that might be another venue for you to mine and see if there's an opportunity for you to fill in the balance of the week not that you should try to trade every single day, but you'll see today that we had something that was really classic outlined overnight last night. So let's drop into the hourly chart for cable. All right, here is the British pound versus US dollar on the hourly chart. And again, we have that daily imbalance up in here. So we'll see if it wants to go up into that. I'd like to see it stay heavy and trade below this sell side liquidity pool. And then there's the old low over here that has sell side liquidity resting below it. The only concern I have is, is this is a really long drawn out consolidation. So it might require it to trade up here first and then reject and go lower. Or I may be completely wrong and it just keep going up and dollar falls. So because, and this is very important for those that are new, okay? If I, as ICT, Michael, can outline it and justify both sides 
using my tools, that is low probability. High probability is for the periods of time where it's easy and one-sided for me to point out what I see in the marketplace and the opposite side of the trade is really a hard sell. In other words, it's hard for me to see how this would be going the other direction. Now, as a retail trader, when I first started, it was very easy for me to see my side because I wanted it. Maturity, and over the years of doing it, I know how I'm gonna be wrong. And if I can see what I'm looking for in the marketplace, when one-sidedness, in other words, it's clearly a bullish scenario or it's clearly a bearish scenario, I need it to be that way for it to be high probability. And as you go through this mentorship and you learn more and more each month, you're going to glean more insights as to what defines high probability and more specifically, what frames low probability. You might be thinking, well, why would I want to waste my time with learning low probability? Because unless you identify what it looks like, you're going to fall victim to it. All right, so let's drop down into the 15 minute time frame. All right, here's the 15 minute time frame. So again, we had relative equal highs. They swept that today and they took it down below this low here, cleaned up all this imbalance. We rallied one more time back into the bearish order block and then we're just sitting here in the middle of the range. So really hard read here. I only tell you that I'd like to see it go lower and that would make sense to me, but it might need to send it higher before it does so and to send it up too high, and how high would that be that would be problematic and not want to go lower? At the time right now, looking at the chart, I don't have a way of framing that. So here's the other lesson for this video. If you don't know how to define where you're going to be wrong, then that's also an indication you should not take a trade, okay? Uh, it's one thing to say, okay, I'm gonna enter a short or I'm gonna enter a long, here's where my stop will be, and I'm content with, if it hits it, I'm wrong, and I wanna be out because I know this is gonna be a problem it would probably keep going. I don't know how to frame it right now with the way the market structure is for cable. So because it's both, well, not both, it's really neutral, okay? But I'm telling you what I would rather see, and it may require things overnight to develop the storyline, but I would rather see it go lower than go higher. Let's make it very easy and say it like that. But because I don't know how to frame where I would be wrong and set up that framework for risk management, I don't have a clue right now looking at the chart. And that's not weakness, that's wisdom. So give yourself permission to not know something certain times in your analysis. And when you don't know anything about that particular market or that particular setup that may be evading you, that's also an indication that you should stand on the sidelines and feel comfortable doing so. And now we're gonna jump into the five minute chart for cable, do our daily log entry. All right, here's the five minute chart for British pound. Again, rallying up creates the high on London open kill zone, then consolidates on the New York open kill zone, and then displacement to the initial low of the day that was formed overnight, and then back into the middle of the range, and then consolidation. So again, nothing in here, unless you're a scalper, nothing terribly exciting, and it's one of those days where everything I'm teaching you is aligned with the logic. From New York open, don't trade. Now you're going to look at this and say, okay, well, what about this? And what about that on the one minute chart and this and that? Yeah, sure. You can do that, but you're trading in low probability conditions and imagine the way you may feel if you try to force doing something. And you've heard me say this now multiple times, non farm payroll, don't do this. Don't do this on this day. Don't trade the rest of the week. And then if you take a trade and you take a loss, whose voice are you going to hear? <laughs> You're going to hear ICT said this, 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 this. Oh, I wish I would have listened. Oh. And you're going to think about that. And it's going to be like that, that little annoying internal voice that's going to be me saying, I told you not to do it, but you had to do it. <laughs> so don't do it. Okay. But again, there's not a whole lot in here I want to talk about and just focusing on the fact that this is what we get classically in this time and week each month. Not all the time. There's going to be times where the market just really blasts off and goes really nice and has directional movement. I'm just not a participant of that. What? Yeah. I just let it go. And I don't miss it. I don't worry about it because most of the time I'm coming back to it later in the day, right before I'm doing a video to talk to you all. And I missed it anyway. So even if I was in front of the charts, I wouldn't have taken the trade. I wouldn't regret it. And because I'm not worrying about doing it, I've exchanged that experience for something I would rather do with my wife or my children or, or myself with my personal time. So 
let's go over to the S&P and then close this video up for today. All right, here is the E-mini S&P, the March delivery contract for 2021. And if you recall, we were talking about the S&P up here and I was giving you the contrast of what I was saying over the weekend prior to it creating a premium. Okay, so I made the distinction on Monday. Then last night on Tuesday, I outlined some ideas for you and covered all of the imbalance in here. And now we're going to flesh all that out based on what I've mentioned and what you see in your chart. So we had this area here, this imbalance level, and it's the premium level of the SIBI. Sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. This is the discount level of that SIBI. So here's your two little areas that you start with. Up here, from this high to this low, we are overbought. We don't need an indicator to, to give us that information. We can see it relative to this high and this low. We're really pressed up deep and we're above 50% of that range. That means we're in a premium market. So the algorithm is going to be looking to do what? Reprice to a discount array. Where's the nearest discount array? It's this old high because that was the imbalance. We went through it here and we're going to go back. We look at it, seeing it trade to it and through it here, back up to this level again, okay, and then sells off, trades up one more time. We don't expect it to go above that. We're looking for it to trade softer, and it does. Here's your rejection block. Project that through. So that's one objective there, and our attention goes to the lowest down close price here. That's the next one here, and then we have this old low. And then we can consider if it keeps going lower, this fair value gap right there. So around that, uh, what is that, 30, 37.60? Is that what that is? Let's see. Low comes in at 37.56 and a half. So we'll call it 37.57. Okay, just to make it easy. All right, so we're going to drop into a five minute chart in this area right in here. Just make sure you remember this red line is this level. The first blue line is here. And the second blue line is the rejection block over here. So that way you know where your bearings are before we drop down into the lower time frame. All right, here's the five minute chart on the E-mini S&P. The day starts here on midnight on the 3rd of March. Price trades up at some random level, creates the high sells off, comes back up, hits that level that is the discount level of the four hour sell side and balance buy side and efficiency. This is that lower level. Look how it's hitting that there. Oh, but it's over here, support resistance. No, this is how you pick out the real support resistance levels. Classic support resistance doesn't cover imbalances. I'm showing you how to use the imbalance to overlay with what would reasonably be expected as support broken then your turns to resistance. See that? You should be smiling right now. <laughs> so the market trades lower, comes back up in again. Rejection block there. And then sells off one more time. Bearish order block. Buy side liquidity. Sells off one more time. Here is that rejection block on the daily chart. Look at it bouncing there. It's almost uh, like magic. And it rallies up again. A little bit of imbalance over there. Trade softer, fair value gap, and then dumps as we go into the close of the day. So let's add some annotations on this five minute chart. All right, here's the sell side imbalance, buy side efficiency, premium level. The fair value gap that I mentioned here trades up into it there. One more time here, and then wouldn't you know, it comes right back up and touches it right there. Now I want you to think about what I said yesterday, okay? Last night when I was talking to you about the S&P, I said that this market, like the bond market, doesn't have a lot of manipulation. It's very, very efficient. What does that mean? Well, I want you to take a look at this candle right there, okay? That's the discount level of that fair value gap that I've already brought your attention to. That high of that candle comes in exactly at 38.98, okay? Look right here in case you're not looking at it. Look right here, okay? The high of that candle comes in at 38.98, okay? Right here. Let me zoom in here because I'm beginning to second guess myself, even though I know it's the, <laughs> even though 
I know it's the right price. I'm making sure that that little pointer is right on the right handle. All right, so 38.98 right there. Okay, the high of today, 38.98. Not a quarter of a point. Not a half a point. Not three quarters of a point. Not just short of 38.98. Exactly 38.98. What's the high of today? 38.98. What was the high yesterday? 3,903 and a half. It doesn't get any better than that. Like I can do this stuff with Forex, you've seen that. But these types of markets, they tend to be very, very, very clean. Now, how many times did this fair value gap get used? Here, here, here. You can't pick daily highs and lows, Michael. It's impossible. Stop telling people that. Well, here you go. I'll walk you through it again. <laughs> and it's not even Forex. And we were looking for what direction? Down. So contrast what you're seeing here, okay, with that of what I mentioned on the weekend commentary. I said that I'd expect trouble for the S&P or stocks. And we're seeing underlying distribution here. Now, they may come out this Friday or tomorrow with the uh, data and the stock market uses it to just keep on going up higher. Who cares? Who cares? We're looking for setups. You know, we're not trying to take the trade that has to be the daily range over the entire course of the entire week. We're looking for surgical strikes that make sense with precision elements. And then we can take those trades and take our profits at logical levels. So let's look at that. Uh, you could be a seller at $38.95. That's your fill, folks. There's no spread in these markets. Like, that's the price you get. You sell it there, you get that price. It ain't something lower, something higher. It's that price. If you buy it or sell it, it's that price. Whereas you have a bid and ask spread in Forex, you have to overcome. That does not exist in this market or in bonds. That's another reason why this market is clean. And you're probably saying, then why did you ever leave these markets that go to a Forex? Because I mentioned I like the speed when the Forex market does move. It's fun. I had an email from one of our students that said that she was really interested in this. And I mentioned the fact that they're slow. You got to be careful. When I say slow, this is slow to me. Now, if I'm comparing this to 1990s inner circle trader trading, <laughs> this is a lot, okay? Uh, we moved from 38.98 all the way down here, okay? So that's a lot of handles, okay? Where we are right here, we're, look at who we're here, where I've highlighted it. Okay, from, if we went from this point here to... That's a daily range back in the 90s for me. Like that that was it. That's that's what we were seeing. Like that's the kind of moves that would be a session move. It's nothing. It was hardly anything. If we had like an eight handle day, you know, that was a, you know, that was a good move. That was a really good move. Now we're seeing moves like these things here where it could be almost 100 handles in a day. You know, that's enormous from where I started. And the folks that traded the S&P before me, where it didn't hardly move at all for an intraday daily range. <laughs> you know, during the 80s and uh, 70s, you know, Standard Poor's didn't have a big range. So these are really wonderful opportunities to trade. And these markets still, even though they're considered slow in my definition, if you don't know what you're doing, you can really lose a lot. So don't let me misrepresent this market. When I say they're slower, uh, what I mean by that is they don't try to funny money you too much. You, you, how can you deny that there? And I told you this level here, and it ended up being the high of the day yesterday. So here and here, and then we saw the run up into it on Monday. Finally making the level and then selling off. So... These levels still work, not just in Forex, and it works like clockwork. But you have to have the logic behind the levels. You just can't just say, 
well, you know, I'm going to go in here and take this trade here because it has an order block or has a fair value gap. There has to be some kind of logic behind it. And you can see, even though we've been in this range, it's deadly accuracy. Like, it's really, really, it's just, it's fun. It's really fun to see it unfold like this. So hopefully, I have maybe whet your appetite with delving into indices. If it's not your cup of tea, then it's not your cup of tea. But it's still price. And we're still going to talk about this type of market. We're still going to talk about other markets and commodities and things like cocoa and lean hogs <laughs> and live cattle. Those things are going to come up too because I want you to understand that what you're learning is price action mastery. You're not trying to be just a one-trick pony. You want to be able to trade. You want to learn how to read price. I'm teaching you that. But there are certain things in, in these markets that are little characteristics that you need to know about to help you fill in those gaps that would otherwise evade you if you just simply looked at you know my free tutorials so hopefully you found something in this one i will talk to you tomorrow until then be safe